Hi, it's Chef Janie Pendleton. We're back in the kitchen where we are making meals for the crock pot. This is freezer meals that you're gonna put in baggies and you're gonna freeze them up in advance. Now, what I've done here is, is a lot of people will just put the meat in, in the bag with the vegetables, you know, vacuum seal it or whatever and put it in the refrigerator. I think that's very much cross-contamination, especially with chicken. I don't think you should do that. So what I'm going to do here with my uh, chuck roast here, I just have a chuck tender roast here. It was $10.81, uh, 546 a pound. So it was almost two pounds. And what I'm gonna do is I wrote on here, on freezer bags, be sure and use freezer bags. I wrote on here um, the directions, what it is in the directions. And here, this right here is the outside bag. So these are all freezer bags. So we need freezer burn. And the first thing that we're going to do here is we are going to get our very clean hands. And, um, and if you want to cut any of this off and make something else, like slice it off for some breakfast sandwiches or lunch sandwiches, now's your time to do that. Nobody says you can't cut a few little wedges off a of roast. But I'm going to keep it whole. And I'm going to push out all the air that I can. I have a uh, vacuum sealer, but it doesn't work on these freezer bags. All right, so get all that air out as you can. And then seal it down just like that right there. All right, now I've left a little bit of the fat on here. And you can take, and you can pre-season this. You can put all kinds of salt and peppers and pre-season this. Uh, lemon peppers, um, uh, anything. Uh, anything that you like. Um, any kind of sauces, you can pre-season this, okay? Now, I'm going to take and leave this rolled up just like this so I can see this through the next bag. Anyway, all my spices in, are in here. I have my thyme that I'm going to use from my garden. I have salt and pepper and celery salt. I didn't put a lot of salt in here because I did the celery salt and a few shakes of some red pepper flakes for just a little bit of heat and then I'll just put this whole stem of the rosemary in here. Now you can put the whole stem of the thyme in here on the steak or on your uh, meat if you want to. In this case it's a roast. But yeah, you can do rosemary on a steak or on a chicken, whatever. And then this right here, you can do oregano or thyme um, on some beef. It doesn't matter what you're gonna, whatever you're gonna use it for, you can pre-season it. You can freeze those things together. But in this case, I'm not going to do that because I have all of my uh, spices here in one of these little freezer bags, okay? And I'm going to take that and I'm just going to, oh, I'm tying the wrong direction here, get all the air out of it. The can, there we go, now I got it. And I'm just going to tie this in a knot, just like that. See that? It's got all my spices and everything in here. And I'm just going to cut the top off just like that right there. All right, that's our next piece. Here I have a red onion. That's a half a red onion. You can do a full whole onion if you want to. We have, the celery was really small that I bought. So this is actually a whole, this is actually a whole uh, bunch of celery there. And then um, I've just chopped up some, what I had left over here of the uh, small peppers. Now also here, after all this cooking, this is all the carrots that I had left, the carrots I bought for my, uh, for my salads in a jar. So um, I didn't have any whole carrots left. I put them all in the, um, I didn't hold any back. I put them all in my uh, beef stew. And that's fine. I've got these. They'll cook up quickly, and they'll blend in really nicely with the other parts. So baby carrots would be better. Sliced carrots would be better. But that's what I had. So I just kind of wanted to put them in here to show you for an example. Now here, I like tomato juice on my roast. So here I have another type of freezer bag. Well, let me try to call me there for a second. I'm going to seal it closed just like this. And this is the tomato juice. Do not mix your tomato juice with the um, with your beef broth yet. Do not do that. Matter of fact, if you want to, you can even add your powdered beef broth to another little package like this. And I might do that if I use it. If you need flour in your recipes, you can even add your flour into a little sack like this. The whole point is though, is to keep everything separate and from cross-contamination. OK, 
Okay, so let me just go ahead and just get the air out the best I can here. I'm zipping it close. Okay, so here's our tomato sauce. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna pack these separately. Remember, never to wash out the ones that have meat and to reuse those. You can reuse the ones that have the tomato juice or this in there, but just don't ever reuse the ones that have meat in it. So we're gonna stick that down inside of here first because we can see what this says through here. So we know that's the meat. Okay. Now you can go ahead and put all these right inside this bag, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put them in a separate bag because I know that I can wash this out. And I'm gonna write the directions on here first. I just have to write my directions on here real quick. You just need to say, um, add veggies and bake or roast uh, two hours. Two and a half hours probably for the size of roast at 350 degrees okay or until it's done and we have three pieces of garlic here as well that's going in the peppers are going in celery's going in the onions are going in we're just going to go ahead and pre-mix them all up like I said, I wish that I'd had some baby carrots here because this would have been a much prettier example for you from what I really normally do. All the ingredients that's going in this meal. Now I just gotta get the air out. Flipping it over and rolling it over. There we go. But I actually want the writing on the outside. There we go. All right, now in our bag with our meat, we are going to put in our vegetables. Remember, this stops any type of cross-contamination. We're going to add in our tomato sauce. I'm going to put it so we can see this. And then this right here, spices, and I'm gonna write on here spices, just in case I give this as a gift or, and we'll just kind of set those right here on. Get all the air out. And there we go. We have one family size crock pot dinner. Okay, one family size crock pot dinner. This will feed probably at least five to six people five to six people. And you'll wanna add some potatoes to this as well. I always, I never freeze my potatoes, you can, but after I chop them, I never freeze my potatoes. Um, you can, I just don't like to. So I add the potatoes to it when I do, when I roast this. But this really is a really, a really big help. I don't know why I don't like to freeze them, I do it in the beef stew. I guess when it's covered and it's already cooked and flavored, I do. But, um, but yeah, you definitely could add the potatoes. Uh, but I always add so many potatoes around my roast that they would never fit inside this bag because I just pile on the potatoes and the parsley, the fresh parsley and, and stuff. So, but this definitely gets you started or someone else started, all right? Now this is gonna go in the freezer. It will stay in the freezer. We're gonna eat it this month. It's one of the crock pot meals. And you're gonna put it on low, crock pot on low for six, about five to six hours or on a low for about two hours and then high for another three okay and that's for the crock pot you can also roast this if you don't have a crock pot you can roast this in the oven for about two and a half to three hours you'll know because this roast will be nice and tender with that tomato sauce and you can use a little bit of tomato paste and that's uh, add a little bit of water a couple of tablespoons of water tomato paste and you can use that as well you can use beef broth or anything along that line all right we love you. Be sure and subscribe. There's more where this came from. Um, be sure and hit the like button. Uh, if there's something you would like to see me do as far as freezer meals go, and for the monthly uh, meal planning that we're doing this month, uh, just let me know, okay? 
Um, so far, I've spent about $500 on groceries because we had to go again today to get some things. And um, so, so far, we're about $300 to, to $400 cheaper on our monthly grocery bill so far doing it this way. And I have a lot to cook up yet. I have a lot to cook up yet. And then remember, keep your microwave tubs because you can use some of this for microwave meals as well. So when the kids get home from school, they can eat a little bowl of beef stew or chicken and dumplings or something right into the microwave and heat that up. I know that this seems like a lot of um, plastic bags, but I just don't want you to get sick, especially with chicken or any meat. I just don't want you to cross-contaminate, okay? And you might even want to do this. You might even want to wear rubber gloves. I didn't. I've been washing dishes and doing this all day, but... Um, but yeah, you can even wear rubber gloves if you want to, if you want to go that far. But um, a lot of people will put the meat in with the vegetables and in with the sauce and just put it in here and, and do it. But I've had a lot of people tell me they've learned some hard lessons about food poisoning and getting really, really sick in their family doing that. So, and I just don't want to make any of you sick and I certainly don't want to get my own children sick or my husband sick. So um, I don't want to be responsible for that. So that's why I go ahead and say, you know, um, separate them in a bag okay we love you go with god be sure and subscribe we have our 20,000 subscriber contest coming up we also have the bible quiz contest coming up the second one and we're going to be doing a draw on the person that won the niv bible we love you go with god blessings hit that thumbs up okay john one more for the freezer here bubba mm -hmm.